Live with Ryan Reese. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1 564 6173, or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. What's up? This is Sean McCann, and this is Live with Ryan Reese. I'm joined in studio with Wade O'Neill and Melinda Reese as well. That's Thank, right. What's thanks, up? guys, for being here. Yeah. So I'm not alone. I know. Um, and many people know that Ryan right now is on vacation, taking some time away, hanging out with the family, hanging out with the triplets, right? Yep. yep. Recouping, refreshing. What, some well-needed rest. It's been a very busy year. There's a lot of things that are taking place with him and the whosoever. There's a lot of cool things coming up. Yep. We're going to be talking about some of those things later uh, in the show, the Kill the Noise Tour, all those things. Um, but keep those things in prayer. We'll be back on the radio next week. And no. God's been doing such an amazing work. Yeah, God's been doing such an amazing work in so many ways. So, you know, there, there's a, so many things that are taking place in our, our world today. And before we, we get into the subject, um, I had a rough week this week. Yeah, you did. Yeah. A rough week. I had a really rough week. Um, for those that don't know, this week was tough for me. I I got food poisoning on Monday night. I came home, um, had a normal day, and as I came home, I was going to chill, sit down, watch the debates. And before you know it, my stomach was going crazy. I was going back and forth to the restroom, and before you know it, I was just fighting and warring throughout the night. Your wife said that you were like, Oh, like not crying, saying? but like you were like groaning. Yeah, groaning, like Yelling. halfway between like <laughs> screaming and groaning. She told you that today. Yeah, today. Uh-huh. And then she In also said she's felt bad because okay, we can stop. <laughs> no, <laughs> she felt bad because what she found out was food poisoning. She's like, well, then I could have helped him, but when I thought he was sick, I was like. Back off, don't come near me because I don't want to get sick. Yeah, they, they had me quarantined down at my house, like where I, could, I couldn't leave my room because I got my kids, and she was staying in the kids' the other room so nobody would get sick. But it was horrible. My heart went out to anybody that's ever been food poisoned before. It knocked me um, off my feet for about a day and a half or two, but I'm good now. Um, but it has been a rough week. I know, Wade, you were battling with a little sickness as well, but yeah. we're all here. We are. Um, yeah, a lot of things taking place in our world today. And as we were driving out here, kind of like um, talking about these things, I, I think this is what a lot of people are wrestling with out there listening tonight. The political unrest that's in our, our nation. Exactly. Right? It feels like there's so much uncertainty. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of subjects here tonight. And if you feel led to call in, you have a question regarding anything that we're going to start talking about right now, uh, you can call in at 888 888- Five six four six one seven three, triple eight five six four six one seven three, and when we're talking about political unrest, it's not just what's taking place in the debates and all that kind of stuff, but the terrorism that's around right. the world today. It seems like the shootings all the time. Um, a lot of people can lose heart and be overwhelmed, right? Most hopeless time I think in the history of the world right now. I think so too, and Melinda. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about this as well. I mean, you turn on the TV and something's always happening. Always. Yeah. There's always a shooting or there's always something going on. There's never that, any good news. No, never. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then with the political temperature that's going on right now, it's like the media is like trying to steer it the way they want it to go. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. So you're being brainwashed mm-hmm. a certain way when actuality it's like, you need to really go the way, obviously, of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like what you can't listen to it, right? Because yeah. it's noise. Yeah, and you, you know, get, get all over. You get it gets overwhelming. It does. You know, if you don't have the word in your life, mm-hmm. like the word is the barometer of like sure. discerning what's right and wrong, decisions that we are to make, how we're going to make it through things. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, sometimes things could be painted in such a way. You're like, man, it's so overwhelming. Right. But the Lord will give us strength. He will give us the ability to, to choose and to vote. And I think it's very important for Christians to vote. And when exactly. you do vote, you you vote, you pray. Um, and it has to be based upon truth, okay. things that the people stand for. Does this right. line up? You know, I, I always look at it this way. No candidate is my savior. Heck yeah. no. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter what, what yeah. side that they're on, you know. But at the end of the day, I got to be able to, to rest at night knowing that I made the best choice possible uh, for my family and for the future of this nation because the nation is in a a a critical time right now the crazy thing is is that the reason why i i feel like there's so on so much unrest is because 
my son, who's eight, has been asking me about the mark. Mm. Like, he's like, what is that? You know, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, if you get the mark, you're damn to hell forever. Mm -hmm. Like, you cannot get out of hell. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, well, what does that look like? You know, and I'm like, well, it's the devil's number, 666. So then (laughs) the other day he's like, well, is it the actual number? Like, what if they want to do something else on me? Does it have to be 666? I'm like, (laughs) it's going to be probably, for the most part, I'm assuming, a chip. Yeah. And 666 is going to be tied to it somehow, some way. You know what I'm saying? Right. Either the, in the company name or something of that nature. But, no, you can't take it, you right. know? And he's really concerned about it. Now, realistically, like, it has to be what's going on and what he's hearing, you right. know? Or else why would he all of a sudden have this sudden interest in the end times? No. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? And what's going on? For sure. Just don't be here for that. Ex- that well, that's why I tell him. I'm like, you don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah, and with that, you know, the reality of, like, the days that we're living in are the end times. Like, um, sometimes those words can be used uh, loosely, or maybe they For sound sure. like a cliche, right. you say it so often, mm-hmm. that sometimes you feel like it loses meaning. But seriously, if you line up Scripture with what's taking place in our world today, things are in prime in, in the prime area. You know, when we talk about, you're talking about the mark of the beast, mm-hmm. you know, there's three main areas that the world is going to be dealing with that's going to, uh, the thing that the Antichrist is going to be able to s- uh, solve. One of them is the government problem across right. the world. And look at it. There's so much unrest. There's so many nations across the world. He's going to bring in a, a one world government. Um, money situations, mm-hmm. for sure. There's been financial crises across the United States, across Greece, across so many other areas. And that is unrest because right. then there's no stability. So the Antichrist, the Bible says, is going to bring in a one-world monetary yeah. system. What's another issue that's in the, across the world today? Uh, people will say religion. Right. You know, look at um, uh, radical Islam across this nation, mm-hmm. the, the fear that it is uh, taking in. And then other people will say religion as a whole is against this because it's old school and, it, and it's uh, moral teachings or whatever, and they would like to do whatever they can to wipe it out. But why don't we do this? Here's a compromise. One world religion. Right. And you know what? It sounds like far-fetched at times, but now that things start getting closer and closer, you see how people could so easily, um, uh, you know, fall for this. Right. I've seen this in multiple times in the elections prior, like in 2004, 2000. Everyone's going crazy for these speeches. Like, this guy's going to change the world. Right. You know? And they're like mesmerized. Mm -hmm. You know? The Antichrist is going to be able to have the greatest orator skills, like a John F. Kennedy, like an Obama, like people that can speak well. Right. But he's going to be able to back up what he's what he's saying. Yeah. And there's going to be things put into action. There's going to be a need, and everything is lined up. Yeah. I don't know if any of you guys got that link. Um, Ryan sent it, and Shane sent it as well. That link for the Doctor Oz um, show the other day. Uh, Doctor Oz is one of those doctors that's on. Right. I don't know during the day, mm-hmm. but he was talking about this medical technology that is oh, right the, around the corner, yes. which is the chip. Right. Yeah. And this chip, they said that it's been implanted, I believe, in ten thousand people at this time and mm-hmm. it starts breaking down what the capabilities of this hmm. chip is. You put it in your wrist and this isn't like make-believe TV. This right. is on primetime television during yeah. the day. Um, you put the chip in your in your wrist and it will be able to have all your identification, your license, your birth date, your passports. Um, you all Imagine this. He painted a picture. What if you were in a car accident? You're knocked out. Nobody knows who you are. You don't have any ID on you. Well, by this chip, they're able to see all your medical record, all your insurance, and they're able to take care of all of those things, plus missing people, all these things. It, it painted a picture right. in such a positive way, and it just reminds me that we are living in a time where these things are right around the corner. Right. Another, right? another deception. Well, the funny thing is, sorry, is that, you know, I was telling my son, I was telling him that, you know, they're putting chips in animals Mm -hmm. to find them. So if they get lost, they can find their animal. And to people that have animals, they're like, oh, my gosh, that's the best Mm -hmm. thing ever because I don't ever want to lose my pet because it's like my child. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's desensitizing us. So when they want to put it in humans, we're like, sure, it's been so great with animals. Right. It's going to be fabulous. And I was telling them, that's how you, that's how it happens. It's not one day they say, hey, we're going to put a chip and everyone's like, yay. It's like slowly breaking down our society to think that something is good. Right. You know, and I think as we see these things coming up as believers, as Christians, Mm -hmm. we can see what the Bible says and we can see what's taking place in the world today. 
And then, but this is something that can happen to you, especially when you're not, you know, rooted and grounded in the mm-hmm. word. Maybe you drifted away yeah. or, or whatever. Your focus is on the material, what's around right now, right. how we can change things in the political realm, how we can change things in our, our culture from doing different programs mm-hmm. and all those kind of stuff. But in actuality, it is leaving the truth foundation who is the Lord himself. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, yeah. that's why there's so much social unrest behind the things that we see in our flesh and blood. There's spiritual warfare that's behind it. For there's sure. a demonic force that is behind all the things that are in our world today that are truly against the things of the Lord. But the church, which has been called to be a light unto the world, um, is being defeated yes. sure. in a lot of For ways. Sure. Right. Um, and this is the same is true in the Old Testament, the nation right. of Israel. God says you're going to be a special people. They're not mm-hmm. perfect, special. You're right. going to be my people. Na- nation of Israel means governed by God. I'm going to be over you. You stay close to me. I'm going to provide for your needs. Um, and all the things that he was going to call them to do. And there was simplicity, right. fellowship, communion. As time went on, mm-hmm. they would start getting influenced by the outside. They would go after other gods. Mm-hmm. They would be... Um, going a lot of different directions, and then they would get humbled men- multiple times. God had grace over and over again. But if you read the Old Testament towards the end, and many of the prophets were warning them, the nation right. of Israel, judgment's coming. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're not repenting. And as you did, as they didn't repent, both of them went into bondage. And the same is true, like with us today, that 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 truth that man we've left. Our first love. In a well, lot yeah, of ways, the right? coming of the Lord is a truth, right? Right. So I think, I think as the church as a whole, right now we've stopped uh, desiring to see the coming of the Lord. Mm. And um, the Bible constantly talks about pr- looking up to the. Jesus taught about looking for the coming of the Lord. And so when you're when you're desiring the coming of the Lord, these days are exciting times to be living in for the believer. Um, to possibly be that generation that that may not see death, and to be able to live in this world knowing that we've been called for such a time as this, and to to fulfill the call of God. But like you're saying, it all goes back to truth and the truth that you're standing on. I think mm-hmm. now more than ever is is a time of deception. Yeah. And I was reading this article. Um, um, it was put out by the UK, and the theme of it, the title of it, was a world crisis with no world leader. Mm-hmm. And so people want to be led. People are always looking to be led by a man. It's the same problem like you were talking about back in the prophets mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and not truly looking to the Lord to lead them as yep. he promised he will be. And it fails every single time. Exactly. Yep. You, you get your eyes on the wrong thing. And, you know, one of the things of the nation of Israel as well is that they were called to be a light to the world. Right. To bring people mm-hmm. to the reality of like this is what it looks like by people that worship God. And this is how our lives look like. And this is how our families look like. And this is how life is to be under the, the eyes of the Lord. And the same thing with us in Jesus, in Christianity. We have been called, Jesus says, mm-hmm. you are the light of the world. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of play, ways, the, the church has failed in that, right, Melinda? Well, heck yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. like, look at, there is no difference between, I mean, the world and the church as I see it right now. Sure. The divorce rates are the same. So what's that saying? You know what I'm saying? We're right. failing. We're failing as a church. We're failing as Christians mm-hmm. because... We're looking like the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what is it? Is, are people not truly willing to deny themselves and pick up the cross? Mm-hmm. Or is it that they're not, they're going to church, but they're not doing what they should be doing in the sense of reading the word on yeah. their own and getting into it? And You know what I'm saying? Diving yeah. deep yeah. into it. What I mean, you know what I'm saying? And what perhaps the, the, world's, the, um, the word's not being proclaimed from the pulpit anymore. You know, you have this, the same culture you see, like you were saying, in mm-hmm. the world you see brought into the church. Everyone's looking for a man to lead them. And, right. And a lot of times in the churches, it becomes a popularity contest. So you're not even attending the church to hear the word and to live out what you've been taught because there's no more, the, the, the standard's not being upheld. But then you're, you're going to, sh- to church because you have a favorite pastor. And we have a, a, a plethora of... of uh, <laughs> Pastors. pastors and churches <laughs> that we can right. attend but he, um you know always talking to 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 Rawl and all these uh, older guys when you went to a church you knew you were called there you were called right. there for a purpose and you were called to serve and so in in many ways the the world is looking for a man to lead them but then if we go to church for man as well um we've forsaken that as well exactly yeah. get your and, eyes on the wrong thing yep. and men aren't and, and the bible is being removed from the pulpits and and you know the crazy thing is is that 
yes, there are so many churches just in Southern California alone, Mm -hmm. which is good and bad. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not all supposed to be at one church. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Lord calls us to different uh, churches to do what his work. And so it's like, that's a, that's a blessing that there are so many different styles of teaching in the sense of the word, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and that, so you have that choice, but yet people aren't choosing from the word, like Wade was saying, they're choosing because, oh, this guy's cool or, hey, all these cool people go over here or this is where my friends are going. I'm not getting fed necessarily, but it's okay. You know, what I've heard a lot, a lot of times is like, oh, you know, the culture is just different, you know, and so we have to adjust to the mm. culture, you know. But I, I will sure. say this, um, God's holiness has never needed to change. No. God's holiness has, from the Old Testament sure. to the New, has remained the same. Um, in the Old Testament in Leviticus, it says the Lord is holy, right? right. Yeah. Um, and throughout the... The New Testament, uh, you know, for those that are going to see the Lord must be Mm -hmm. holy, set apart for his purpose. Right. And I think uh, truly somebody that has had an encounter with the Lord, you come to the acknowledgement of Mm -hmm. this. I'm a filthy person. For sure. I have a lot of issues and I need help and I'm broken and the way I'm living is not right. right. The way that I think is not right when I'm living in the flesh. These things are not pleasing before the Lord. And there comes a place of brokenness and change, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what that scripture that so many of us are equated with, with um, who's ever in Christ he is a new creation. All right. things pass away. Behold, all things become brand new. That's true. There should be a life transformation that takes place in the inside of a man or a woman's heart that starts radically affecting the way they live their lives, yeah. the way their home is, the way that they speak, all these things. I mean, they come out by the spirit of God. Um, but it is only by being submitted to the Spirit of God. Sure. Right. Right? Amen. And what you were saying right now, you were talking about, Melinda, dying to self. And I right. do believe that that's the key. I mm-hmm. think one of the, the big things in our culture today, in our world today, is selfishness. Right. You know? And what does that mean? Well, selfishness is thinking only about yourself. How is this? And that's what a lot of people do when it comes right. to the political thing. Right, oh, right. my God, if it doesn't really apply to me. Or yeah. I'm going to vote this way because this is better for me. Right, right. Do you know what I'm saying? Not as a whole. Right. Yeah. And when you start making decisions just based upon selfishness, you are going to mess yourself mm-hmm. up. You're looking at just right in front of you. Right. And you will suffer in the long run. Well, I mean, let's be real. Mm-hmm. All of us have been in the Lord Mm-hmm. for years mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that every day we don't struggle against our flesh sure. you know what i'm saying and so it comes down to why do the three of us for the most part i mean yeah. we're not perfect yeah mm-hmm. but choose the right do you know yeah. what i'm saying it's yeah. like and it's a choice yeah okay. it's a choice of not a la- of the when those thoughts come in your head mm-hmm. you go wait those thoughts are not right yeah. obviously so I'm not going to feed them and I'm not going to go forward with them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. it's like almost like people don't have that or they're not like they don't want to. They don't want they to don't want choose to. the right. Yeah. So they just choose the wrong and justify it and move on and think that it's not going yeah. to affect anybody but themselves but what they don't realize is sin affects everybody Everybody. this comes back to i think always relationship with the lord you're talking about having a correct perspective of yourself sean and Mm -hmm. being brokenness and that's only comes through a true and genuine time spent with the lord and i think like you you pose the question Mm -hmm. well why why are we choosing right and at times not choosing wrong i think it comes with a correct perspective of self and who we are and who are not in the sight of the Lord and a desperate dependency and really the reality of what our self does to us, mm-hmm. you know, um, the destruction of the flesh, the destruction of your mind. And when you have a, a proper perspective of who you are, you know, you are your worst enemy, yep. right? And self is a reason why Satan got kicked out of heaven, yep. right? It's, it's all rooted down to self, right? Yep. Right. And Jesus says, you uh, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And people, tend to stop there in that text, but he says, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses my life for my sake will find it. And so finding the true and genuine call of the Lord upon your life, um, always, once you get a taste and see what the Lord truly has for you, um, 
I know where I was <laughs> right, <laughs> before. Right. I don't want any part of that, right. yeah. you know. And the Lord allows me to have a always have a conscious perspective of who I am without Him, and it keeps me coming back to the Lord. But self leads to destruction. So yes. Romans eight, right? Yep. Exactly. You owe nothing to the flesh. Yep. Right. If you're tuning in right now, this is live with Ryan Reese, and we're just talking about issues that are taking place in our world today. Maybe some things that you're wrestling with as well. You know, when we're talking about things that the political unrest, when we look at you know, issues in the church, dying to self, all these things that maybe many of you wrestle with. We just wanted to bring up these subjects because we know that they're important. So if you have questions, um, you can call throughout the show. Probably take the questions on the other half of the break. Um, the number is 888-564-6173. Again, the number is 888-564-6173. You know, talking about... Um, all these areas, I would say the selfishness, you Mm -hmm. know, what I was saying about that is because one of the things that comes after you submit your life to the Lord is Mm -hmm. service, Mm -hmm. right? It's serving the Lord. It's putting others before yourself. It's recognizing your own faults. It's saying, you know what? I have to love my wife in this particular area or for the wife. You know what? I'm going to show my husband that I love him by, you know, serving him by my children. I'm serving Mm -hmm. the Lord by serving my children and whatever I do. And like you were saying right now, you find the essence of life when you Mm -hmm. die to self, you know, and it's something that is against our culture, but with it, there's so much freedom in it. And everyone's serving something. Oh yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yep. And and most of the time, if it's not the Lord itself, you know, we give the enemy a lot of credit, but a lot of times we're self-deceived. Right. Um, We're destroying or people are destroying their own marriages. People are destroying their own relationships because of self. Um, So. Well, they don't want to do the work. Right. You know what I'm saying? It takes work. It marriage is. is work. Yeah, it is. For and sure. marriage isn't about, I'm happy. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everyone, you know, starts off with, for well, sure. I'm just not happy anymore. Well, whoever said you're yeah. supposed to be happy? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's not about that. Yeah. Right. Marriage is a calling. It right? is. There's as you would serve in the church, yeah. you know, when you when we, we're all in full-time ministry, but when... We get home to to our spouses at the end of the day. You take off the ministry hat and you put on the husband hat and you serve your wife, you serve your family. Right. And and there's joy in that. Yes. There's joy yep. in serving your family. There's joy in and then your then your kids know who you are, that they're yeah. a right. servant of the Lord. There's transparency in the home and, yep. and that's what love is, right? Exactly. Yep. Um, yep. Jesus was the greatest of servants. And the, and the, like you were saying right there, your faith should come out in practical aspects. Yeah. Of your relationships, mm-hmm. yeah. your marriage. Yeah, marriages are, are tough. All of us have different areas where you struggle with it at different times. Right. And those are just areas that we have to learn. How do you right. have victory in those areas? Sure. It's your relationship with the Lord. Exactly. Sure. You know, a lot of times people get things on the wrong level. Yeah. Right. You know, they put things higher be- than the Lord. And when those things yeah. don't work out, it fails. Right. They look for their wife yeah. to be their savior right. or their husband to be their savior or different things right and when those things disappoint them mm. then everything falls apart right mm. but when god is first in your life and you recognize that when i submit the lord and when i'm serving him and i'm loving him he's going to give me wisdom and compassion and mm. patience and the things that i need to have have for my wife or for the ladies to have for their husband for sure. and to make it through these testings they're testings that we go through at different yeah. times exactly The crazy thing is I always remember what um, Dale said in one of our staff meetings, and it wasn't anything really profound, but it stuck with me, and it was, you know, we we were talking about the events that were coming up in our church, and he was saying, you know, if you don't want to serve at these events, you better check yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that's the key. Like, if you don't want to serve at the church that you're going to, you better check yourself yeah. because that's what we're called to do. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For Why sure. wouldn't you want to serve there? Yes, we're in ministry, sure. but there is a servant aspect of that too. And that's the same thing in your marriage. Yeah. Right. If you don't want to serve your husband or wife, you better check yourself. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because that all comes together. That's all, It's all wrapped up in your relationship with the Lord and where you're at with him. It's your barometer of right, where right. you are with him. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's just the, those things that, you know, that cue you in, wait a minute, maybe I'm a little off here or, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to bring you back to where you should be with the Lord, you know? It's the greatest it, commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, your might. Love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus would say, 
in John chapter 15, paraphrasing, if you love me, keep my commandments, right. and you love me and do what I say. Um, and that's serving. That's loving other yeah. people. That's, that's right. The son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, give his life a ransom for many. And there's joy in that. There's peace, there in, the, there's peace in the home when you're serving right. each other. Yep. When the wife is serving the husband, the husband's serving the wife. Um, and I know that you've always talked about and being in your Bible college classes or even from the pulpit, that God's a God of order. Mm-hmm. And, and he establishes that order in the church, in the home uh, for a reason and understanding your calling and um, as a husband, a wife, spouse, whatever that looks like. Yeah, because by that, it could be the greatest influence you can ever have yeah. in, your, in your family. It could be the greatest legacy that you have. I think about those things often. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about, yeah, how, how does it keep the three, just using as an example, mm-hmm. to not maybe go down that road. You know what? Fear yeah. of the Lord, right. you know, sure. in my life. You know, I think I, I count the cost of, of different things, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I look at my children, I, I look at my wife, I look at the calling that God has given to me, and I'm like, this is such, everything that is good in my life comes from God. Oh, Lord. Right. It's all, it's yeah. all the Lord. Right. And so why would I want to sacrifice these things yeah. for, for things of the flesh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there's temptation for all of us at sure. different times, um, in different seasons, Um but, you know, through the, the trials and the testings of life, those are the things that have always kept me. Mm-hmm. You know, I have those moments where I reflect on, like, how God, good God has been in my life. Sure. Right. And though, you know, because there's listeners out there that might be in the middle of maybe thinking they're going to do something real dumb. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're thinking, you know what, I'll deal with the repercussions when they come. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what. Those things can have a long lasting, devastating effect yeah. upon in your, your home, right. upon your family, condemnation in your life, sure. recouping from what you're maybe going to do mm-hmm. yeah. can be so hard. Right. Yeah. And I would just caution you by the grace of God to just cling to the Lord, mm. come boldly to the throne of grace. So you can find help in your time of need. He right. understands your temptation. Mm. He understands what you're going through right now, and he's able to give you strength through your weaknesses. Um, we did a conference today, a matter of integrity. Mm. It was all based upon this. I was listening to Chuck once again when I was coming. <laughs> I listened to him all the time. Yeah. Right. But he was talking about this, about the influence of a father in the home mm. is huge. Yeah, you know, because children so often as their kids, they want to be like yeah. their dad. Right. They, they can't wait till they're as tall as their dad, as, as strong as their dad, and be able to do things like their dad. Um, they look up to you. Right. And so, right. Yeah, and man. since that is true, recognize it. Right. Hey, embrace it. Exactly. And be obedient to that calling. Right. You know, you you find a lot of people, a lot of men, um, trying to find fulfillment outside of their calling to be a husband or to be a wife. Yep. And you forsake. The, your, the family, like you're saying, that everything that the Lord has given to you. And yeah. it all comes back to simplicity, man. Yeah. A sim- simp- simple, genuine relationship with the Lord. You know who He is. You know who you're not. And you know every good and perfect gift in your life is from the Lord. Yep. And without Him, you mess it all up. Yep. And yeah. that's the truth. Exactly. It's not trusting yourself. It's trusting the Lord. Yep. Well, we have a, a couple minutes right now before our, our first break. But there are some events taking place. So I wanted Melinda to run off some of the announcements. So, we have a new station that we just got on, and we want to welcome KEPH 95.3 FM in Friendswood, Texas. And they just picked up our show, so now we're on uh, 47 radio stations. What's up, Texas? I know. Hey, Hey, Texas. (laughs) In 15 states. Nice. How's the beef down there? Yum. And then there's going to be a concert, and Dose is the... um, they want the whosoever's want you to come hang out next Saturday night, October 8th, to watch Dose in a live concert at Chain Reaction in Anaheim, California. And to buy tickets, go to www.allages.com. So make sure that you go to that website and uh, purchase your tickets and come out and support Dose. Um, the other thing that we still have going on is the... Um, Kill the Noise. Kill the noise. Yeah. Kill the Noise. Kill the Noise Tour. Yes, and when... We still need funding for um, raising for our stage and sound system so we can, t- we can continue going to the high schools and touring and just, you know, putting out... Um, amazing events. Amazing events and preaching the gospel to the kids that don't even know who God is. And Dose is the band that goes with them all the time, too, so right. make sure you go to Chain Reaction. We'll see you on the other side of the break. 
More live with Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... whoop de doo Now, back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say it, we didn't warn you. Loud noises! What's up? Once again, this is Live with Ryan Reese. I am your host tonight, Sean McKeon, and I'm in studio with Melinda Reese and Wade O'Neill, hey. and we've been whoa, just whoa. chopping it up about things that are taking place in our world today, and the nation, and the church, morality, dying to self, and all of these other topics. And if you want to chime in, maybe you have a question, you can call in at 888-564-6173, 888-564-6173. And we're going to take this caller right here, Alan from New Orleans. Wow. New Orleans. Alan, are you there? Yeah. How you doing, man? Oh, pretty good. What's your question? Well, I had a question about, uh, um, hey, Al- Alan, Alan, can you do me a favor? Can you turn down your radio a little bit so we can hear you? It's kind of distorting over the phone. Okay. Cool. You, you can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know whether, how do you know if you're being attacked spiritually or self-defeating? Got it. Wait. Well, I think in some in some respect, Alan, all this, all all attacks are spiritual, right? The Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this age. So, um, knowing that you're in the spiritual, you're in a spiritual battle. Um, if you don't mind me asking, do you? If and if you don't mind mentioning over the air, do you? What what are you struggling with? Well, uh, uh, what it is is my confidence in what God called me to do. Mm. And, and, you know, I'm a minister on staff at a um, Great Emmanuel Church in New Orleans. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people, they they, they, they give me the accolades about, you know, I preach well, and yeah. they, they tell me, you know, all this good stuff, and it don't move me in no kind of way. Mm. You know, I, I just know in my heart that, this is what God wants me to do, but I still feel like I'm out of place. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the, I think one of the biggest um, attacks of the enemy is discouragement. You know, when you're being used mm-hmm. of the Lord, the enemy's gonna want to discourage you. 
So I think you just be faithful to what the Lord has called you to do and just do the next thing. Do what the Lord's put in front of you today and be faithful with that. And overall, if he has called you to teach and preach his word, he's opened up the doors, be faithful to that. But know that the attacks and the discouragement is going, is going to come. Everyone, every great servant of the Lord inherited uh, discouragement from, from Jonah to Elijah to Moses to, to Peter to John. You, you look at it and, and really allow the Lord to humble you in this season. Be confident in your calling. Know it's the Lord who calls you. And be faithful right. to do what the Lord's called you to do. Yeah, okay. you know, Ellen. You know, we're all pastors. Me and Wade are both pastors, teachers too, and love teaching. You know, and with teaching, and you know, worship leaders as well. Like, there's so much warfare in those mm-hmm. things, and a lot of times the enemy to it discourages us in a lot of ways. You know, and sometimes we do look at our own um, ability. Sometimes we're like, well, you know what? Just like Moses, like I can't speak well. You calling me to yeah. go do this? Um, but a lot of times the Lord will use our weakness and so he can be strong in our lives. My, my pastor is Raul Reese and he talks about the same thing as well in the beginning Mm -hmm. of his walk. Like, you know, he, you know, barely graduated high school and then, um, he had a heart to just be used by God. And some people were saying, well, maybe you're more of an evangelist, but he had a desire to teach. And then God has blessed his life in such a way. He looks at himself and he thinks, oh, you know, I'm not the best orator or all these kind of things. And yet God has used his life in a very powerful way. And I think for a reason, like it's good for the Lord, for us to stay small so he can be large in our lives. And he gets all the glory and he gets all the honor. And so that's a great thing. A discouragement's yeah. going to come. Spurgeon was discouraged at times. He dealt with depression. <laughs> yeah. Some of the great pastors and leaders of old have done the same thing. So you're in good company, okay. Alan. So I just want to encourage you okay. keep doing what you're doing. All right. All right. I, I appreciate that, man. All right. Encourage yourself in the Lord. All right. Thank All you, brother. Okay, man. Right Take on. care. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's a good call. You know, because that is true. Those things happen. Those things happen in, in people's lives. Um, I've been discouraged before. I've, okay. told, I've told you that before. You know, you do a Bible study and then, then you're leaving like, did that make sense? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then somebody comes up and like, God <laughs> really blessed me to do right. this thing. And, yeah. and in your perception, you're like, man, that was like the worst Bible study I've ever done. But you know what? I, I said this to the guys before. You know, we gauge our success differently than God. Right. You know? We think, well, a successful Bible study is if this many people come to the Lord or these many people show up. No, you know what? God takes care of the success. Success on our end is obedience to the call of God. He takes care of the results. And when you do that, you take a lot, there's a lot less pressure on yourself Mm -hmm. and everything flows. Exactly. You know, go ahead. I was just going to say, I remember, I don't know how many times I've taught, but it was one of these times and literally I got off. And I went home and I cried. I literally cried because I was like, it was... You and me both. <laughs> yeah. I, it was absolutely terrible. Like, I totally failed. Yeah. But yet, the next day, I mean, you know, it wasn't like everybody. But, you know, yeah. there were people that were like, wow, that really, like, ministered yeah. to me. Or, wow, you know what? That was really good, Melinda. And I was like, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, and I was like, okay. Yeah. I guess, When you're called, you know, there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. You know? And that's it. You know, um, I, I was just, when you were starting uh-huh. to say that right now, I remember the first time I ever spoke, like, in a class, it was the high school class that uh-huh. Scott asked mm-hmm. me to do last minute. And I never, that wasn't my cup of tea. Like, I was shy in school. I was, mm-hmm. if I had to speak in front of a class, I would ditch that class. I would not go. Right, like, right. Seriously, I was <laughs> petrifying. So it was nothing I wanted to do. Then I come to the Lord in 2004. God starts opening up doors. I share my testimony a little bit in small settings. Right. Uh-huh. But when I was asked to teach i remember like being up there and then it felt like i was in school again i was like all these people looking at me <laughs> yeah. i'm like i started seeing spots and everything i'm like how does it feel when you pass out because i never passed out before in my life right. but i'm like i think it feels <laughs> how i feel right, right now like here it comes it's coming you know exactly but i made it through and i left like that yeah. like you melinda like just kind of discouraged i'm driving home and then scott called me he's like hey encourage me it was really good i was like all right. And in my that? in my mind I was like, I'll never gonna do that again. Yeah. Right, right. But now as I look back now mm-hmm. and it's been, I've been teaching for I don't know how many years, over ten years now, and it's like I would have missed out on so many amazing things in my life right. if I wouldn't heed the call. Oh. And that goes for anybody that's out there. Mm-hmm. You know, don't look at your own inadequacies. Right. Um 
God can use you when there is a, a willing heart that is wanting to be used by the Lord. Exactly. Sure. You know, but going back to a little bit of that question, a little bit about what we've been talking about, um, when we look at, he was talking about discouragement. And I think it's very important that when we identify the issues that are in the world today mm -hmm. and in the church, um, we have three enemies that are the same, <laughs> right? Right. And these are the enemies. The flesh. Yep. That's you. You mm -hmm. can be your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. That the, the the flesh wants to take over, wants to reign, wants to dominate. Two, the world itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look how fast paced our world is. Look at how many distractions there are. Social media can be a great thing in getting uh, communicating in a lot of ways, but it can also be a great distraction. It's like crack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it crack. is. You get a, Seriously, get a, you get on it and. <laughs> An hour goes by mm -hmm. and you're like, what? Yeah. yeah, get addicted. Yeah, you do because it leads you. It leads you yeah. down this rabbit hole that really leads nowhere. Yeah. I and mean, it, honestly. And if you're not careful, yeah. I'm sure they it's can take you in a lot reality, of different areas. It'll it take is. you to a lot of different <laughs> areas. Everyone needs an escape exactly. from this craziness. Yeah. yeah. And it's right. in their pocket. Yeah. And the yeah. things can be so alluring, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and these are the things that you have up against. And then the one behind it, Satan mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. The deceiver, yeah. the liar. Um, the cheater, the murderer, um, this is the reality that is before us. And as we're talking about being defeated, mm -hmm. why are we losing the battle? We look at our nation, then looking mm -hmm. at the church as a whole, it's because we're folding to the enemy. Right. We're, we're giving in to the lie of the world that these things are the things mm -hmm. that you need to bring yeah. fulfillment or happiness. Right. Or we're, you know, giving into the flesh over and over right. and over again. And we miss out on what God has for us. Well, I mean, think about social media. What does, I mean, for the most part, I can't say 100%, but for the most part, what does that make you focus on? That makes you focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. What you're doing. Or who you're not. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Reality yeah, exactly. And all the fabulous things yeah. that you're doing that so-and-so is not. For sure. Or I'm invited here, yeah. but you're not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're constantly focused on what we are doing or yep. yeah. self. Oh, yep. I got to take a selfie of myself. Yep. I got to show this of myself, yep. yeah. you know? Yeah, perfect filter, yes. you know? Yeah. Think perfect angle. Exactly. I've been working on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, 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 can't, I can't seem to get a tan. You know? <gasps> Trying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My kids always tell me, you're doing it all wrong. You don't know how to do it. I'm like, well, I don't. Show me. <laughs> like, But, you know, that's it. So I now we're focused on ourselves. It's a right. good rule of thumb. Just any listeners out there, Instagram's not real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's someone I know that has um, m many, many, many followers um, on one of their pages. Um, people like their photos, and but I know the behind the scenes, what's really going on. They're just a broken person, right. battling depression, yeah. on prescription medication. No one would know by their Instagram post, right. but I think it goes back to what Jesus said about the enemy. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. Yep. And when he speaks, there's no truth found in him. John chapter eight, mm. and so I think um, you always bring your bring yourself self back to that that truth. Be rooted and grounded in truth. And if there's no truth, there, there's no victory. Yep. If you don't know truth in your mind in your heart, we live in a in a culture in a world right now where truth is all relative, secular humanism, and your truth can be different than my truth, and I have no right to question your truth. Um, but that's what the enemy does. He he tempted say, he tempted uh, the Lord that way. And if you don't have uh, an, a, a high standard for the word, if you don't know it, you're defenseless in this world, and you're defenseless against the enemy, and you're defenseless against yourself. Yeah, you know, let me read something. And I think it sometimes it's so cool when you just read scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, and even to people that maybe don't even know the Lord, when you just read this truth, and then you just let 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 it speak to you. Right. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, it says this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he also will reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit, the will of the will spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart what are you saying mm. he who sows to the flesh meaning he who puts all of his efforts towards the flesh mm -hmm. is going to reap the things of the flesh that's what's going to be strong in their life um he who sows to the spirit of god meaning he who spends time in prayer 
and the word growing in his relationship with the Lord, he's going to reap benefits that are going to have everlasting um, benefits to them. And I like what it says in verse 9 where it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose Mm. heart. You know, a lot of people are losing heart. Mm -hmm. A a lot of people are getting to a place where they're getting weary. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of weird teachings that are out there sometimes. You know, one thing that I see people get caught up in, YouTube crazy. They watch so much YouTube videos. They get, oh my God, Illuminati this, this, this. this." And before you know it, they're so, they're having anxiety talking to you. Right. Like there's no rest, there's no peace, there's no joy. Mm -mm. There's just all of these weird theories that are Mm kind of driving their minds crazy and there's no rest in them, you know. And here, God doesn't want us to be all weird. He wants us to be stable in him. Exactly. I would have to say that, Uh you know, just because it's on the Internet Mm -hmm. doesn't make it true. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. It's like yeah. just because you see it, you hear it, you watch it, mm-hmm. doesn't make it think it's not true. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily true. You know what I'm saying? So don't look at that stuff as fact because mm-hmm. anybody could put anything they want on YouTube. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like people get caught up in that and they believe it's true and then they go on from there. And then all of a sudden they're building their whole philosophy yeah. mm-hmm. of life upon yeah. this yeah. instead of upon the word. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they get torn away from what truth really is we get weighed down in this world man a lot of it's a a mental battle man you're looking at your current circumstance and if you don't have the helmet of salvation you don't have if you're not putting truth on and you're not looking at everything that comes into your life through the lens of the word of god you're gonna be hopeless right you know or you can look at the situation you're in that God loves you. The Bible said that he's loved you with an everlasting love and everything that comes into your life passes through the hands of God and it's all for your good and his glory. And then you submit to that and you have joy in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your storm because the Lord is molding you and shaping you. The Bible says you're his workmanship. And I always trip out on Proverbs chapter 16. That's that's one of my favorite Proverbs. You know, uh, uh, the man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. The lot falls into, is cast into the lap of a man. But it's every decision is from the Lord. Look, the Lord has a plan for your life. The Lord has a call upon your life. And we know that as a basic biblical principle. But when we choose not to believe it, then there's striving. Right. But when you're resting in that truth, the Bible says you're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Yep. God's mm-hmm. got an amazing plan, amazing purpose for your life. So all you have to do, the Lord is so simple. Exactly. Is abide. Yep. Mm-hmm. Apart from, abide in me and I in you for apart from me. You can do nothing. Yep. We make life hard. Yep. We. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like if you read the word of God, it is simple. It's, it's simple, it's, man. So simple. If we just follow what the word of God says, our lives will be simple. I, you know what I'm saying? I but that, we yeah. confuse it all. Yeah. Make it complicated. We do. Yeah. We do because we're we're thinking with our worldly mind because yeah. of our flesh and we're trying to rationalize all these things when it's like, well, what does the word of God say? Right. Who cares about all that noise? Yeah. What does the Word of God says? And what the Word of God says is what you do. Period. Exactly. That's it. Every single time. Mm-hmm. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Um, if you're tuning in right now, we're in studio. Ryan's gone on vacation, kind of recouping. Mm. But we're here in studio with myself, Wade, and Melinda. If you want to call in, you can. There's a few more minutes left at 888 But I do want to bring your attention to a couple things. One, We've been doing this show for over a year and a half. Um, We've been getting so much great feedback, and we'd love to hear your feedback. We are still um, compiling all questions and comments that you have, so keep sending them in through all of Ryan's social media or through his website. On uh, ryan-reese.com, you have a listing of all of the Shine teachings that he has done. They have links to all the YouTube things. You can share them with friends. His I Am Second thing is there as well. Um, and then all of the archives of Live with Ryan Reese and the podcast. Also, the Kill the Noise Tour, book it. They're coming hard this this part of the year right now. Tons of schools are already booked, but they're looking to book more. Go to the Whosoever's website. They have so much amazing stuff. They have amazing product, shirts, hats, socks, um, a bunch of accessories. 
and all of that product that is there, it funds the things that they're able to do. It goes right back into the whosoever's to go to these high schools, to go to the different opportunities that God has opened up to them. And if you are down for the vision of the whosoever's, you can just donate freely on the website as well. And if you just want to give straight donations, go to ryan-reese.com and push the donate button. Mm-hmm. And then you could just give your donation. That will go straight to the Kill the Noise yep. to bring them more to the high schools. Yep. So when we look, guys, at what's taking place in the world, and Melinda, I'll ask you from just a practical standpoint, like uh, oh, maybe a woman in a home that, you know, you know, going through a marriage or having children, maybe wrestling with some of these things uh, in their life. How is a woman going to have victory in her life walking with the Lord with all the craziness in the world today? For me personally, mm-hmm. to have that, and like I said, I mentioned that, Social media to me is like crack. Mm -hmm. So I don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like I don't want that noise in my head Mm because I know where my head can go. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like what we were talking about earlier, knowing who we are. Mm -hmm. Like I know my faults. Like Mm -hmm. I'm so aware of them that I safeguard myself daily from from not going there because I know them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like getting in the word. You know what I'm saying? As many times as I can throughout the day. You know, I don't even care if I'm, you know, waiting for my kids. I have 10 minutes. I have a Bible in my car and I'll just read a scripture. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't have to be this long, intense Bible study. It's just pouring the word into your head. And sometimes when we're on, you know, on the way to school, Mm. we read the word with my kids. I make them read a chapter. You You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only way that we're going to be able to fight against the enemy Mm -hmm. is knowing the word of God. If we don't know the word of God, we can't fight him. Like we can't forsake the reality. Like you said, we're in a war. Yes. You know, and it's for, and, and it's eternal. Yep. And, and a lot of times the war is over your mind, over your heart. Um, but like you said, with we keep, it seems like in the show, we keep going back to truth, mm-hmm. going back to the word and the simplicity of the Lord and his love for your life and his desire um, um, for you to walk with him and just staying in, keep washing your, I know my mind. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know? I know my mind and I know I need the word because I'm a mess without it. I, I always go back to Romans 12 to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yep. I need that renewal daily. There's a bunch of phone calls I coming know. in right now. So let me try to grab one before it gets too, okay. too late. Uh, James, James calling from Whittier, right? Yes. How you doing, James? What's your question? Got uh, a couple so minutes. My question is, first of all, I want to say, uh, you know, I, I'm just praying that God continues to you know, use you guys because you guys are just you guys are doing a great job and oh, thanks, it's really James. inspiring. Thanks. thanks James. And then, second of all, um, I'm really I'm really excited of where God's taken me for, or pulled me out of and and where He's got me going. And I'm taking this on 100 percent. And um, I just really feel heart driven. And so, I, in my prayers, I, I do really uh, pray, you know, to for God uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to use me and, and to, you know, yeah, glorify his name and stuff. And <clears throat> with that, I just kind of, you know, stay open. And I just want to make sure that I'm uh, being guided properly. I, and it's not myself that's making these decisions that I want to be able to, uh, you know. And, yeah. and I, I, I do do my reading. I try to read as much of the Bible as I can. And I'm, I'm in school right now, too, so it's kind of... I feel like I, I, use, I read more of the Bible when I do my studying, but mm-hmm. James, yeah, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, th- thanks for that. And, and I like your question, and I'm going to have Wade uh, answer this as well. We're going to continue going through all these questions. So thanks for calling. But I know your question is, how do I know if a decision is God's will or not, Wade? I think there's multiple ways, right? Peace. You know, peace. I, I think it, as it pertains to God's will, a lot of us get stressed out. Lord, what is your will for my life? And I think we got to remember that God wants his will for our, our life more than we want his will for our life. And that the Bible says that God will perfect that uh, which he's begun in you. And, and he will bring that about. And you, and you oh, walk obediently to the Lord as far as a decision. You, you know, sometimes the Lord's going to call you to take a step of faith. Exactly. Yep. And, it, and if you're being led to take a step of faith, it may not make sense, but you will have peace. If there's no no peace, you know, or um, striving, exactly. Or, Melinda you know. brought up Pastor Dale earlier in this message. I always remember him saying, um, "You you either have peace or you have a check." He breaks down discernment real easy. Right. If you have a check, 
you don't do it, you continue to wait on the Lord. Uh, but if you have a peace, you ask him to open the doors and ask him, Lord, close the doors that are not of you. And if you don't want me here, then you, you lead me, you guide me, and you direct me. The Lord promises us to lead us and guide us. So I would say, uh, right, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. And just do the next thing. Do what God's put in front of you today, knowing that he'll take care of tomorrow. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, James. Take yeah, care. Thank you guys so much. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Take care. I want to try to make it over to this next call. It's kind of getting... There you go. Uh, Carter, we got two minutes right now. Um, your question is what? My question to you guys is, it's kind of piggybacking off the last question, but uh, how do I know that God has called me to be a pastor? Cool. Well, Carter, we're going to answer your your question right now as well. We're almost out of time, so just stay on and we'll kind of uh, talk about it right now. Mm-hmm. I would say this, the call of God takes place when it is a relationship between you and the Lord, this brokenness, man, Mm -hmm. and God gifts people, pastoring, Mm -hmm. teaching, they're gifts of the Holy Spirit. When God places upon your heart, I know for myself, when I remember sitting in studies under Pastor Raw, I would watch him teach, and I feel like there would be a a stirring in my heart, like I couldn't see myself teaching as that, like in a stage of so many people. But there was this prompting in my heart, like, I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's out of my comfort zone. And the Lord would continue bringing it up over and over. One thing that I was told earlier in my walk with the Lord is if if it's of the Lord, He places upon your heart. If you wake up the next day, it's still there. You wake up the next day, it's still there. When it becomes a burning, when it comes to a place where Paul says, what was me if I don't do this? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no doubt about it. If there's that burning and there's that desire to be used by the Lord in that capacity, it it could be very well that that is where God is leading you. I had had two people confirm it to me. What? That I was going to teach the Word of God. And I was like, okay. Like, I always thought, like, when I listened to studies, I thought, oh, I could Mm -hmm. do that. Or, oh, they should have said this. And not that they weren't doing it right, but it was coming to my head. And then I had two people tell me, you're going to teach. And I'm like, okay, right, whatever. And then I just put out a fleece and I said, okay, Lord, if you want me to teach, then if I ever get asked, I'll never say no. The next day I got called to (laughs) teach and I'm like, wait a minute, wait, no, 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 that's the way it's supposed to happen. But confirmation too. For sure. I think when I first started, I knew that prompting in my heart so much so where I would leave where I was living in Northern California, could come home and drastic lifestyle change and just had this burning desire in my heart, knowing, not knowing what that meant. But I remember one, one time I was walking through the hallways at our church and a pastor um, that I was at the church at the time kind of pulled me aside um, rather abruptly. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> hey, you're called to teach. Don't ever kick on any doors. Yep. And I've always kept that. Mm-hmm. And I stay, if, never say no to an opportunity, right. but don't become so stressed out knowing God has to prepare his vessel before he uses you. Exactly. Psalm 75, verses 5 through 6. Exaltation not, doesn't come from the east or the west. It comes from the Lord. Lord. Let God lead and direct your life. It will be a blessing. That's right. Take care, guys. Yep. Peace. Bye. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, Click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.